People find their vocations in strange places. Mine was on a bus in Peru. Uh, in 1998, I was backpacking there and during one of the strongest El Nino events on record. I got stuck in the resulting floods uh, along with everybody else and I realised what I could do with the engineering degree that I was then studying without really knowing why. I could work in water management uh, and try to resolve the problems you know, caused uh, by, by water or more accurately the problems we create for ourselves by ignoring the natural world. The essence of engineering is to predict the future, it's the opposite of trial and error. Uh, engineers need to know enough about how, how stuff works to predict how it will behave under certain circumstances. And that job is made a lot easier when you work with simple homogeneous materials like concrete and steel. But now we're understanding that this quest for simplicity has its drawbacks uh, compared to, for example, working with complexity of nature. Faced with uh, you know, a change in climate, we're now starting to understand that uh, complex solutions can sometimes be better uh, than the simple ones that we're used to building. So we're turning back to nature and at ADB we're trying to encourage our developing member countries to embrace this complex infrastructure and see nature not as something that should be tamed into simple uh, predictability using materials like concrete, but as something that in itself can offer uh, complex, resilient and multifaceted services. The drawback of simple solutions is that they tend to solve single problems. Natural processes, on the other hand, which are complex, have evolved uh, to deliver a range of services. They protect us against multiple threats. For example, even though a concrete pipe or a drain might convey water more efficiently than a stream, uh, it doesn't infiltrate uh, water into the aquifers and recharge them. It doesn't soak up floodwaters uh, as streams do. It doesn't provide uh, habitat for trees which stop carbon and cool our cities. Concrete pipes don't clean wastewater as it flows through them, but streams do. And finally, uh, you, know, you can't take your kids paddling in a concrete pipe you can take them to a stream. So if using nature is so obviously better, why aren't we doing it everywhere? That's a question that increasingly preoccupies me and, and others. Um, there are various possible explanations. One could be that design standards don't exist or didn't exist at the time that today's senior engineers uh, were studying. They're the guys who sign off on, on design projects now. Uh, another possibility is operating costs. Everybody knows somebody who has pebble created over their lawn or put concrete tiles in their front lawn because they got sick of mowing it. And governments aren't really any different. They also worry about the ongoing maintenance costs of, of using nature-based solutions. Sometimes working with nature is perceived to be risky, not as reliable, strong as concrete. People think it might erode or wash away in a flood. Um, now that's, those concerns have some basis, but we're, we're now understanding that you know, nature can actually sometimes be more resilient than uh, concrete or steel. Concrete, for example, it doesn't repair itself uh, after a storm, but nature does. Sometimes the incentives are all wrong. Contractors and engineers can get paid as a percentage of the capital cost, uh, and using nature can be cheaper uh, than using cement, so nobody is incentivized to do it. Uh, sometimes, you know, using nature requires uh, more space and land, and land is in tight supply, and so we are forced towards uh, more traditional solutions. And finally, one of the obstacles could be that you know, sometimes people just sort of think complete mastery over nature is a sign of progress and modernity, and that's what cities should look like. So what are we doing at ADB? If we're going to change minds, we need to understand what people believe and why about infrastructure so that we can establish some common ground and then build, uh, build from there. Uh, we're proposing revisions to national design standards uh, so that we can de-risk the design process for professionals and engineers who might otherwise feel you know, comfortable just sticking with traditional materials like concrete and steel. Uh, we're building infrastructure using nature in iconic locations like this one in Clay, the Lap River, um, so that we can showcase these solutions to the widest audience possible and inspire others to do the same. Uh, and finally, we're conducting a detailed cost-benefit study uh, on these project sites so we can show before and after the impacts and quantify the economic benefits of the project, showing how they can offset the increased operating costs. Some benefits are hard to capture though, but we know that uh, access to nature restores us, energizes us, 
good for our health. To paraphrase Gandhi, we, we need to be the change that we want to see in the world. And so I'm worried that when we use special labels like water sensitive urban design, or nature based solutions, uh, we're, we're implying that these things are somehow different to the stuff that city planners want, which is infrastructure. So I think we should just call it infrastructure. It's infrastructure using nature. It's infrastructure for the 21st century. We need to tell our governments that this is how we want our cities built. We want them built around nature. We want to join forces with nature and not to replace it.